Welcome, my friends, to part 17 of uh, building the little hodgepodge lodge here, my tiny house. And uh, in this episode, um, we're going to start off by doing the taping and the uh, seams and the texturing and possibly even the painting of the, of the uh, sheetrock walls in here. And um, let's just start off here and see how far we get and uh, see what happens. Okay, so I put this yellow tape on here. That's to reinforce the seams before I put the sheet roll sheetrock mud on there. I also did it over here in the kitchen area. I'm not going to worry about this corner right here because the cabinet goes in here and I want it to sit, uh, sit squarely against the edge. But this is the only part that actually is going to show right here. The lower cabinet's going to be here, the upper cabinet's going to be here. So I'm not going to get too worried about this area. I just want to get this all smoothed out, textured. I got a seam right there I got to take care of. Then naturally I got the seam that's going to be behind the cabinet. And these couple up here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my uh, my tools put together, and uh, we'll get to putting a little bit of the uh, sheetrock mud on here. Okay, guys, I went and got my tools. Uh, I got a uh, stainless steel pan. That's where I put the uh, mud into. Um, got a large knife, a medium knife. And uh, got a corner. These are actually kind of a trowel. Um, this is a sanding block. This is for, uh, you know, finishing up prior to texturing. I got a texture roller, which I will use later. Long handled knife. This is what I, I use for texturing mostly. After I get the texture on, I lightly put it against the wall and I flatten it down. I like this thing. Uh, this is a round nosed trowel or knife, whatever you want to call it. That's for scooping out the, uh, the plastic, I mean the, uh, the mud without messing it up, you know, messing up the packaging it's in. Got a couple putty knives. Got an extra one and a couple extra old sanding blocks. Got three knives in here, three of these wide trowel knives. Trowel, I guess you could call it. Um, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get just a wide blade knife like this and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to putty all, I call it putty, it's a sheetrock mud. I'm going to mud all these seams here and in that corner. Then I'm going to move over here and do this wall. So I'm going to get at it. Okay guys, now be nice. This isn't a how-to video and I'm not a professional. I'm just patching this wall up. There's the one of the kitchen walls. Here's the other one. And I've uh, put a nice little round corner in there where that shows. And also in the meantime, we've been painting this, uh, painting this door frame gray. Well, here's the other wall. I'm going to be putting a really heavy hand texture on this. I just got to let this all dry up so I can get the second coat on it. Yeah, it's not pretty, but it'll work. Also, I um, decided to do something else. It's going to put a little bit of a change on this place. Um, 
See right up there where we've got the rafter that isn't looking too great? I think I'm going to cut that one there and there, and I'm going to put a two foot by two foot skylight right there. I was digging around in the shop upper shelves and I found one. And uh, I'll show it to you. Give me a second. Oh, at first, uh, this cabinet. <laughs> Forgot to show you this. This one's been distressed. It's all been waxed now. And I'm just about ready to put that uh, trim board back on. I mean the uh, face frame back on it. And uh, yeah, I thought you might like to see that. Let's go look at the skylight. Okay. It's a SunTech skylight. And it's uh, whatever CMA means. Um, it's clear. Outer and inner both are clear. Two by two clear skylight with a bronze frame. And it's been sitting up for a while, it got a little dusty. It's been opened before. There it is. Got a bronze aluminum frame on it. Whatever all that is. Well, I think that'll be nice. It's kind of concerning. You can see uh, air through the rivets. Yeah, the rivets have holes in them. I'll have to seal that up. Well, that's just silly. How are you supposed to keep that from leaking? Oh. Well, I don't know what that is. Anyway. It looks like it's a bronze skylight. It doesn't look clear to me. Sort of clear. It does have a bronze tint to it though. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's dual. It's a dual skylight. Inner and outer on it. Well, that's going to be cool. And another thing I'm going to do here is uh, I've taken the door off. You probably noticed that. And uh, I'm going to sand this side here. And I'm going to put the uh, maple stain on it so it matches the interior. And I better figure out which side's the exterior. Let's see here. Yeah, this is the exterior right here. This is going to get painted uh, a beautiful turquoise that I have. I'll show that to you later. And this side's going to get stained right here with uh, with the maple. So it'll look like the rest of the wood on the inside of the, of the uh, tiny house. So that's what I'm going to do next while I'm waiting for this other stuff to dry. You know, guys, it always baffles me why they put these stickers on here with something that almost is impossible to get off. You'd think they'd put it on something that if you just warmed it slightly or something that it would come off. But I guess uh, they just want their stickers to stay on there forever. That's what I'm getting for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> Uh, I got the one off on that side already. You can see the light spot in the wood there. And I sanded the top of this already. It came out pretty nice. But I got to clean up these edges here and get these sanded too. So I'll keep at it and I'll bring you back when I'm done. 
There it is with the uh, colonial maple stain on it. It's all been sanded and cleaned. I think it came out really nice. This door is what they call a second. That's one of the reasons I got them so cheap many, many moons ago. And I paid between $8 and $12 each for these doors, depending on, you know, what kind of damage they had. This one only had this little, little crack right here. See it? Nothing major. That was all that was wrong with this one. But I've got some that are just near perfect. They only had like a little teeny chip on the corner or a little scratch. Yeah. So I've got about, uh, I think i got about 10 of these, maybe a dozen left. Sure looks good. And I've got some uh, clear waterproof, uh, water-based, not waterproof, water-based uh, flooring uh, clear coat. And I'm going to end up putting that on, on top of this so it'll be nice and tough. I had uh, thought about, you know, kind of antiquing the door a little bit, but I, I decided not to. The door is pretty nice and it's got some natural little little marks in it, in the crack. And uh, it's got a little dimple in it there. And it's got a little scratch in it here. So, you know, there's no sense in beating it up anymore than it is. Um, this had a little bit of a splinter on it, and I sanded that down. And same way with right here, there's a little, little splinter there, and I took it off and sanded it down. Then got all the tags off of it. This is going to be beautiful. The whole interior of the woodwork is going to look like this in the house. And I think that's going to look real fine. Especially when we get the accent colors in there. Which I haven't figured out quite yet. Okay. Well, there's the finished product right there. It's in a satin sheen. And I sanded it in between coats, and it looks really nice now. I also did that panel, the face frame for the, uh, for the pantry. Good morning, everybody. Um, today I'm going to start texturing this thing, and uh, it's only going to take a couple tools. It's going to be hand texturing, and... Uh, Keep in mind, I'm not a professional at this, and this isn't a how-to video. This is just showing you what I'm doing. So uh, I'm going to need a like a texture roller here. And this is going to be a hand texture. So um, this basically is just going to put a, um, a pattern into the hand texturing that I do. Um, it gives it a little roughness. So I'm going to be using this standard old putty knife. And this knife, this is the one I'm going to be smoothing it with. And um, just my pan for the mud. So uh, I'm going to get loaded up here and we'll get started. Okay, here we go.
this technique, you don't have to get your, your wall too darn smooth and perfect. Because it's a pretty heavy texture when I get done here. It's messy too. I got three blobs on the floor already. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and take this roller The whole idea is not to flatten it all out, it's just to put bumps and textures into it And you can go back and, uh, you know, if you feel, see a spot that you think is too light, like right here, you can go back and hit it like that and just give it a little swipe like that. Oops. A little bit right there. Give it a little... Now I take my big knife here, and uh, it doesn't really matter which way you go, you can change directions as you do it. barely any pressure on this at all. Just kind of rubbing it over it. So, there's the beginning of the texture. Two hours later. The texture will become more apparent when it dries because it'll all turn white. And uh, there's part of the kitchen. I didn't do the upper part of that wall because there's a cabinet going there and I wanted it to fit flush. And got it around the window there. Okay. Well, my texturing isn't quite dry yet, so I decided to work on the, the roof here and put that skylight in. And what I need to do first is um, I need to make me a 24-inch box that fits right in here.
right in here. And um, I've cut two more rafters here because I'm going to need a um, extra rafter on this board because this one's going to be cut. This one's going to be cut right here. So I need an extra one on the outside of this one right here. And right on the other side of this one between these two, I need to put one more right here because that's where 20 inches comes out. I have it marked right here. So this one will be cut off. This one will be a new rafter. This one here will be doubled because this is a redwood rafter and they're not quite as strong as the uh, um, as the fir rafters. And I don't want it spanning that much area, you know. Right now it's spanning, uh, you know, 16 inch. So it's 16 on center. So, you know, it's an inch and a half less than that. So it's spanning 14 and a half inches. And I don't want it to span any more than that. So I'm going to end up cutting this board right here. You can see I'm going to cut it here. And I'm going to cut it 24 inches up there. And that's right about where that raggedy edge ends, right there. So I'll cut all that nasty stuff out of this board right here. And uh, that'll be a plus too. So this one here, if I have another two by four I can find. I only found these old two used ones. You see I got nails in them already. And this one here is, it's kind of been through the ringer. It's an old board. It's really hard. Both of these are really hard from being around for a while. But um, I cut the ends. It's uh, 43 degrees on one end and 44 on the other on the upper end. So um, yeah, I'm going to get these put in and uh, I may have to put one more on the other side of this one too, just to be safe. Um, if I can find one, I'll do it. If not, um, I may have to go buy one. I'll see how strong it is when I'm done here. So that's what I'm working on right now. I hope I didn't confuse you guys too much. So I'd like to uh, tell you uh, how appreciative I am of uh, you following me along here and watching what I'm doing. And if you have any questions, give me a, a little uh, remark there and I'll, I'll reply to you. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.